A couple of days ago, I woke up early to go for a ride. It's 7.30 in the morning. There's a little bit of snow on the ground. Rooftops are frosty. I needed a cold for what I wanted to do. Temperature says 27, but usually it's three to four cooler than that. I've known for years that batteries don't work that well in cold weather. And that's just from my personal experience with phones and flashlights. So it got me thinking, does cold weather affect e-bikes? That question is why I'm about to freeze my butt off. Here we go, and it is chilly. Now I was pretty certain that range would be affected in colder weather, but what about power? Okay, let's see how long it takes to get to 20 miles an hour, just using the throttle, here we go. All right, there it is. 12.04 seconds to hit 20 miles per hour with a temperature in the 20s, which is actually pretty good for a $1,500 e-bike. And by the way, the bike that I'm using today is the Hay Bike Horizon. Now, a couple days later, it warmed up. Got a temperature of around 55 degrees, which is 30 degrees above what it was the other day. The kids are out playing in the nice, beautiful sunshine. I went back to the same spot to see if I could be 12 seconds. Zero to 20, here we go. There's 20. 13.96 seconds was not faster. And I don't think it was because of the temperature. There was a strong headwind that day, strong enough to slow me down two seconds. Now that does give me an idea for a future video. Now, a few miles down the road, I found a place that was sheltered from the wind and decided to see if a top speed would change. This test surprised me. On pedal assist, the bike was two miles per hour slower in cold weather. And then when using only the throttle, it was still faster in warmer weather by one mile per hour. So warm versus cold weather does affect the speed. Now, is that gonna be the same when you're not on a flat road. This is a 15% grade hill. A 15% grade, according to a picture that I found on Reddit, is considered a massive hill. And it's two blocks long, only gonna use throttle. For the first block, they were neck and neck. Both were holding at 11 miles per hour. After that, during the warm test, I started bouncing back and forth between 11 and 12 miles per hour. So I'll say 11 miles per hour for cold and 11.5 for the warm test. You got just a little bit more power for climbing in warmer weather. Now, before I left the house to do all these tests, I started my tracking app so I could see if there was a difference in range. And this test is the one I'm most curious about. I saw for two reasons. The first is I can't feel my hands and I wanted to give a battery update. I've lost three of the six bars. No, I did not. The other three just came back. Just a heads up, if you do want to get an accurate battery level readout, you do have to let the bike sit for about two minutes. I've gone 5.14 miles. I stopped at the same spot I did in the cold weather test. Battery still full, gone 4.98 miles. I thought that was interesting. I was going on the exact same road and had a 16th of a mile difference. So either I crossed the road more times, just more zigzagging in the cold test, or my tracking app isn't that sensitive. But I thought it was close enough, so I decided to keep on going until I needed to warm my hands again. Again. I've lost two bars. I've gotten 7.96 miles. This is the second place I stopped in the cold weather test. I'm down one battery bar and I've gone 7.69 miles. On my second stop, I lost two battery bars in the cold test and only one battery bar on the warm test. And yes, the distance between the two did grow to over a quarter of a mile. Still not sure why that happened, but it did. Gotta stop again to warm up the hands and do another battery update. Three battery bars gone. I've gone 11.46 miles. This is the most painful ride I've ever been on. <laughs> it is cold. I was at the same location for this third battery bar update with the warm test. I was just facing a different direction. That's why the background is different. This is the third battery bar update. I'm down three bars. So 50% battery, I've gone 11.12 miles. Both batteries are at the same level with three bars gone. And the distance between the two has now grown to 0.34 of a mile. Again, I was on the exact same route as before. So not sure why I was getting a bigger separation. But I continued with the test until I felt a drop in speed. All right, battery is pretty too much dead. Got full throttle and only topping out at 11 miles an hour. So I'm gonna call it good for the cold weather range test. When I got to the same spot in the warm weather test, I still had plenty of power. I was going 18 miles an hour when I pulled up to it and I have one battery bar left. So I'm gonna go until I reach 11 miles an hour. That's when I stopped the first test. About a mile down the road, it quickly dropped to 11 miles per hour. All right, there's 11 miles an hour. So I'm stopping it. On both tests, I only used throttle. I went as fast as the bike could go. I stopped the same amount of times. I got close to the same elevation. There was only a 13 foot difference between the two. And I ended both tests as soon as I hit 11 miles per hour. I got 16.05 miles in the cold test and 16.71 in the warm test. That's only a difference of 0.66 miles, which I think some of that is due to the faulty tracking app. So does cold affect range? Yes, it does, but not nearly as much as I was expecting. 
training. Now that's good news because if you grab this bike, the range won't change as the weather does, as well as the power, at least not that much. You do go a little faster in warmer weather and can climb slightly faster, but it's just not that big of a difference. Pretty much the bike performs the same in cold and warm weather. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I've got a couple more that I think you'll like that involve challenges and tests. I do like to compare different models and different brands to each other. It's just, it's just fun to do that, to see which is better. So enjoy those if you haven't already and have a great day.